Revelations chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and get those out. We're going to be breaking these verses down by phrases. If you have your Bibles, it'll be easier for you to keep up. Revelations chapter 3, verse 13 reads, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. The phrase, he who has an ear, regrettably and sadly, is not indicative of many. Men hear what other men have to say, but many seldom live close enough to the Lord to hear what he has to say. To be frank, the process that we have just explained regarding the making of the pillar is that which must be if the believer is to have the proper ear. Most of the time the flesh is screaming so loud that we cannot hear what the Spirit is saying. The phrase, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. So we started out, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches, presents the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit. In fact, everything done on this earth by the Godhead is done through the, done through the work, office, and ministry of the Holy Spirit. That being the case, we had certainly better hear what He has to say. What is He saying? He is saying that the Lord is faithful and powerful. He has the key of David. He opens and no one shuts. He shuts and no one opens. In all our works in the kingdom of God, our reliance should be on Him alone. Of little strength itself, the church is mighty in her mighty, mightily Lord, faithful and true. He shall keep us so that we shall never fail. And with our eyes on Him, we may be sure of victory. That victory may surely be our consolation. It shall be the victory of the eternal glory in the new Jerusalem, in the temple of God, and His tabernacle with men, where we shall see Him face to face, and love Him forever as He has loved us. Verse 14 reads, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. The phrase, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, presents the last message as given by Christ to the church, which means that the Laodicean church will conclude the church age. As we shall see, it is the apostate church, the church that actually nauseates our Lord. As we have seen the Reformation church, Sardis, and the missionary church, Philadelphia, run concurrently with the Laodicean church. As stated, the Reformation church began in about the year 1500, with the missionary church beginning in about the year 1800. Exactly when the Laodicean church began, we do not rightly know. But considering that we are already in the Laodicean period, to round off the numbers, perhaps we could say that it began in the year 2000. Of course, as we well know, these things begin before these particular times, but perhaps one could say that they, be, they, be, they become obvious at the times mentioned. We know that this church is the apostate simply because of what Jesus says in his message 
as we shall see. The phrase, these things says the Amen. So we started out, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the Amen. Presents this word as the title applied to Christ. It means that he to whom it is applied is eminently true and faithful. What he affirms is true. What he promises or threatens is certain. Himself characterized by sincerity and truth. He can look with approval only on the things in others. And hence he looks with displeasure on the lukewarmness that from its very nature always approximates insincerity. The phrase, the faithful and true witness. So we started out and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, may be considered as a sort of commentary and explanation of the name Amen. As the Lord is the Amen in Himself, He is also such in His testimony. His witness is true and faithful. He never makes a mistake. Error is out of the question with Him. Neither must it be expected that He will become unfaithful and cater to the goodwill of men. The result is that His testimony is certain and true regarding the condition of the church in Laodicea. If in fact His testimony concerning them clashes with their own opinion of self, it is because the latter and not the former is erroneous. This the Laodiceans must hear. They are filled with consent. They have faltered themselves into delusion that they are rich in need of nothing. Not easily will they exchange this view for that of someone else. In fact, if the preacher preaches what they really are instead of what they think they are, they likely will have him removed. So Jesus comes with a reminder that he is the faithful and true witness, speaking the Amen upon whom they may rely to tell the truth. The phrase, the beginning of the creation of God. So we started out, and unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God corresponds with Paul's statement concerning Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, Colossians 1 and 15. This doesn't mean that Christ was the first creature or is a creator of all. It actually means that He is the creator of all things, John 1. 1 through 3. Firstborn in the Greek, as Paul used it, is protokokos and means first of all, foremost, the creator of that of which is being addressed. It is said by Greek scholars that there is no word in the English language that will properly translate protokokos the word firstborn is the nearest they can come firstborn actually means the first brought forth the eldest 
And even though that is the meaning as it is used in the Old Testament, when it comes to Christ, firstborn is a poor translation, translation, except when it was used of Mary bringing forth Christ in Matthew 1.25 and Luke 2 and 7. And that concludes Revelations chapter 3 verses 13 and 14.